Like we weren't seeing as much of the Brood, not so much of the Lycan and the Grimstroke. It was really more of just this Husker pick that they initially came out with. So go them going back to it just shows me a little bit of a sign of confidence. Like it, it can fall flat. We've seen it a couple of times ourselves, Mike. But if they do play to their strengths, play aggressively, I think they're still going to find the timings they need. We're all seeing Cuckoo giving the tip out to 4 2 3 for having that spicy Husker, of course. Bringing the Husker up against Cuckoo himself, who, you know, used to run in teams that used to run a lot of Husker. Sends a bit of a message. We'll see if Cuckoo you, can deal with it. You love a flash of inspiration. <laughs> the battle begins. I think both sides can play pretty aggressive. Uh, you can trade pretty nicely with a Husker and Bane, though. It's it's very hard to win up against Bane with that brain sap up, so should still be able to find some space. First few levels don't feel great for a support Spirit Breaker, like you're running up, trying to hope for a good bash. Up against a Husker, that's fairly easy to punish with the Burning Spears out, so I don't think Zephyr's going to be able to do too much in lane, which is going to hold him back a bit. But it's also hard to bully these guys out. They have high strength, you just... Have to respect Radiance the output of 423. Well, a couple of those burning spears out, and you lose half your HP like you see Cuckoo right now. This is much more even than most of the mid matchups we tend to see. Uh, Ember has a lot of wave clear up the Flame Guard. Carl can kind of try to clear that up with the higher levels in the Orb and Waning Rift. So it's not as simple as it is for Sanctity. It boils down to rune control. Really. This mad match, this matchup's all about bot control. movement out from Lilgun to work that top lane. Again, there's not much you can do with a Spirit Breaker and Brewmaster up against that Husker in the first few levels. Level 3 is maybe where it feels better, but ideally I think it's level 5 to 6. And that's a long time into the laning phase, so you're just going to have to cop that slower lane here for T1. Down bot, Gabby is a force to deal with, especially when Morphosis is up when it's down. That's when you get your opening for Lilgun to be aggressive and you just see their position. You know, they're playing with a disruption level 1. No threat of killing off with a Shadow Poison yet. That will come out by level 2. Just easy spear setups, easy follow-ups into the God's Rebuke, and it can really force the issue on a Terrorblade. Not much a Disruptor can either really stop that at level 1. Whitemon does have multiple Mangos left to keep that Thunder Strike spam going, and he does come in with fresh salves. They have a regen to sustain the lane. I think overall, for T1, they just want to get stable farm on Gabby. Easier said than done, but he's not lagging too far behind. The Husker is having a better lane, Mike. But Gabby is, you know, he's finding something. He's not completely shut out, but you want more from this lane than you are currently getting. Radiant structures are fortified. 
It's an interesting skill build from Carl. He opts for two in Illusory Orb and two in Waning Rift. No points in Phase Shift. So he has no dodge for when Sanctity does want to come in. No stall out mechanic, and that does make it tough for him to trade. That little kill will put Sanctity on top. He's going to hit six faster. Gets the Bounty Rune refill for Mint Green coming up as well. And you are already in position here for Ace 12 to kind of get a trade going. So they, they understand on Little Gun Sand that Rune Control is important. Sanctity is charged up though. under attack yeah they, they just know there's an opening they've got the magic damage up with the shadow demon they are trying to get aggressive top they can't really do much with spirit breaker again you're relying on greater bash stunts it's very rng based cuckoo can try to help with the cinder brew and thunderclap but that leaves you exposed to the husker chasing down i think there's always that threat of 423 running down cuckoo's not having great lane here mike five cs level four it's so low just have to watch when the Terrorblade does commit Metamorphosis, and that's when Gabby's strong. So, does manage to get a kill back, uh, balance out his lane a bit. He is still lagging behind in CS, which is really gonna hurt T1. You're gonna have to invest into that jungle, buy some time for the Terrorblade to really get the farm going, because this kind of pace is not gonna match the Husker spikes. Because that armlet's very soon to come out my Cuckoo again. Four and a half compared to 43.6. This is not a great time, although they will make moves mid. Oh well. Uh -uh. No! Oh well. Quickly as I go. boots his right click damage is going to skyrocket and there's not much threat Sephir can put here he is getting some good exp down mid trying to soak as much as he can as spirit breaker is a very exp hungry hero oh 11 tp'ing in front Just gotta keep a lid on to that Ember and maintain rune control. What really enabled Carl was that haste rune pickup because they forced the fight from the top rune, didn't spawn there. They're gonna force the fight again just to make sure Carl has something. He does grab the next rune, so rune control is actually in T1's favor. This should allow Carl to maybe look for another play with the invis, maybe look to rotate top, find a kill on that Husker, or just make a move onto the Ember if they want. But the loss of rune control here for Lilgun is My painful. Holding back, aren't you?
Dyer's middle tower is oh. under attack. They're starting to build up now. Just allowing this Husker to show up means you have to shift Gabby out of that lane. Radiant's he is already playing in the jungle, but our terrible it's not really he's not the fastest. I mean he can play quite nicely with Conjure Image. There is a smoke play coming out from T1. They still have the Dream Coil. They can make something happen, but 423 is a pretty tough target to try Dyer's to go on. Top tower is under attack. <laughs> Applying the pressure Radiant's in the right spots here from Logan. Away. They know if they keep Radiant's cooking down from the laning phase, he's not going to get as much space to farm himself because Carl and Gabby, especially, are going to be eating up a lot of that jungle. But there's not much room for him to recover. He does show up back top. He does have level 6 though, Mike. So Cuckoo at least has the primal split to save himself. That makes ganks on him a lot harder. And he's got some utility now if he does show up in some fights. Still, T1. They are biding their time here. They, they've got Gabby in that jungle, they've got him farming up, they've got him building up, and he's not being scouted out too much. There are some good aggressive wards from Logan, but they're not in a position to really make use of them yet. So that's some good news coming out from T1 as they will smoke up again. They've got level 6 up this time on White Mon. That static storm could put a stop to 423's dominance here. middle tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. Yeah, I mean that, that's the big kill they need. They put a dent to Fortitree's progression, stopping him in his tracks. He is going for the Sanch and Heaven's Halberd, so he's not going to have protection from that um, static Storm, and I think that's going to be a big issue. He might want to pivot towards the BKB just to have that protection, or if they do break out some fights, lock down White Mon first. If you can get a grip on that Disruptor early on in the fight, the Husker doesn't have too much too much to worry about, so maybe that's the play down line. He is queuing up the BKB next, but it's still a ways off as we are still waiting for the Halberd, and that should give T1 some time to threaten knowing that White Mon does have that Static Storm up. Again, they've been doing a good job of enabling Gabby in the jungle now. He's just been farming up. Number two in that fort, still lagging behind 423 by some amount, but he's ahead of Sanctity. He's managed to Dyer's bounce back top. after a bit of a slower attack. lane. And that's good news for T1. They just need to keep stalling the game, prevent Lil' Gun from going for objectives. And to be fair, Lil' Gun hasn't made too much progress on any tower. So they're taking fights, but they're not getting, in, getting anything on the map for it, Mike. Attack.
Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. in the pit with the armlet and Sanji's he's probably got enough HP to try and solo and even have some assess mass find some time but they bail out you don't want to risk too much T1 had a good read of the area they did have that ward on the cliff to spot any sort of movements into Roche so they were aware and that is keeping Logan back I think Logan playing the slower pace Dyer's now is hurting them the attack. fact that they haven't taken a tier 1 tower to apply more map pressure Radiance is giving T1 the space they need to still attack. catch up after a slower laning start and that does Dyer's lead to that very slight attack. network lead Logan has 6 to 12 but only 1k lead the, the gap between Fortitree and Gabby is starting to grow a bit smaller as well and you need to find these items up. You need to find these fights, Mike. Radiance Take some towers, because if T1 are cap. allowed to play the slower pace, the Terribly will go bigger and bigger, and he's going to scale a lot better than the Husker will. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Coin of the realm. Dyer's top tower has fallen. find the big kills they need to they find the tower on top of it as well so now they've got a little bit more areas to farm in for gabby safely without the threat of the instant tp gank and logan i think they really need that bkb and the husker like when we talked about him maybe pivoting from the halberd he is going to finish that up first so without that bkb every single time white mon's able to get static storm they have the control I think Logan need to be the aggressors in this lineup. They can't afford to just sit back, casually shove in waves, casually farm up. They have to keep that run and gun up because T1 are winning the farm game. Again, net worth lead not that big. Uh, Gabby's basically within 700 gold. So the Terrorblade is already set to overtake soon, and he's going to hit that Scotty timing fairly quick as well, Mike. More stats to play with, life steal, re uh, life reduction as well. Healing reduction is going to be big against the Husker. Two lives on is under attack. No! Oh well. Playing it safe, no detection up. Hard to pin down the uh, spirit breaker in the middle of that. And I think for T1, that loss in the Roche is pretty big, but. They don't really have the best fight there, especially if um, Static Storms on cooldown. So they just have to surrender it. They lost here mid tier one. So Logan does find some objectives to start playing around. That should allow them that control onto the triangle. We see nice wards coming out here from Logan to just ensure that they can keep control in the area, cut off Gabby's farm. But T1 are playing right. They're playing on the bot jungle. They're playing in that triangle on the dark side. They're still giving Gabby the farm he needs despite the losses. And they're keeping this game rather even on that word. Logan are starting to get some of that momentum swing going, Mike, and the BKB for 423 isn't too far off. So you have to be cautious about that. It's not like we're going to see an instant Ags from White Mon anytime soon to have that mute. That's a long way away. And 423 is going to be able to just control these team fights as he did in the laning phase. And that's going to be a massive concern because you barely have a way of keeping that Husker down with the BKB. And you have to find a way of dealing with Sanctity as well, who's also going towards the BKB. So both of these 
big heroes for Logan are going to have spell immunity and T1 and they're very reliant on just static storm to get control here. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Manages to bail out. He doesn't really Radiant manage to clear Creep Wave. He's being held back from farming Dyer's as well. That's uh, something that's going to hurt the puck. But he's buying space out for Gabby, who is again within 100 gold now of the Husker. Scotty up. Healing reduction is going to hurt the Husker's durability in the middle of these fights. And he's going for his own BKB on the TV. But that won't match the BKB timing of Logan. But for now, Logan just really wants Radiant to wait for those BKBs. Oh, They're taking their time. They know once spell immunity's up, they can keep running and gunning. They will go for the smoke play early, though. Let's see if they can catch someone out here. Even a master falters. Flames will spread thrice. He's building up towards his BKB, as mentioned. The Scotty's up. He is getting the space he needs. T1 has been stalling really well at the cost of perhaps Cuckoo's farm. Cuckoo's lagging behind even Zephyr now. Not the biggest deal. All Cuckoo needs to do is split in the middle of the fight. He already has a spirit vessel Radiant's to put a dent on, on top of that Husker, who does rely a lot on the Berserker's blood to heal true. But we'll see what happens when the BKBs fly out. And it's a lot of patience from Lulgun and T1, but the BKB timing of Lulgun just feels a lot bigger. T1 will go for a smoke play though. Maybe want to reveal that Scotty and Radiant's get a nice kill for themselves. They're just lacking a little bit more, especially on Sanctity. They really rely on that grip to hold, and outside of that, there's just not much. You've got the root from Sanctity, not the most reliable. The BKBs are flying out though, Mike. This is this is the moment where Wilgun should be looking to be the aggressors. They cannot back off now. If they stall this game out longer than they should, Gabby's going to be a massive issue towards that late game. And you do get some good late game scaling now from your Husker, especially at level 25, the Burning Spear's pure damage does allow you to just not care for BKBs, but that is a long ways off. I think right now with the spell immunity you do have, you've got to take some fights, go for objectives, look to pressure, maybe the high ground if possible, and start to shut down the map, because again, T1 does have late game scaling here. under attack. Especially not for the Scotties coming through, like, you just can't deal with the healing reduction. Even with your BKB up, that's, that's gonna be a constant issue. Again, your level 25 is pretty good. Burning Spears, pure damage, can do some work. 
But the Terrorblade's still also very strong at that point. He's gonna have a lot of items to help him survive, and that puts Loken in a very awkward spot. The BKB's already up for Gabby as well, so they don't even have the spell immunity advantage anymore. So dealing with that Terrorblade's gonna be difficult. And I think for Loken, there are so many targets they have to take care of. They have to pin down Carl, they have to ensure Whitemon can't get a good Static Storm. Uh, in the middle of a fight, when BKB's fade, they have to take care of Cuckoo with his split. So many individual issues that Logan has to focus on, but only one piece of control. It gets tougher and tougher as this game scales on, like. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Radiant are scanning. get a little bit more they stem the bleeding but your big issues is you can't handle gabby anymore like yeah you saw all the control coming out we saw the staggered nature of that fight from little gun it was just very split uh, they didn't find the angle with the good arena the first time around the blink forward from 11 just fell flat and once the bkbs fade the husker is very vulnerable very susceptible to that spirit vessel and the scotty coming out he just has no region like the BK, that initial BKB use is just so important for 4 2 3 that it's hard to find a good time to use it. And when he does pop, he has to find the kills. And with the spell protection right now on Gabby, it's just nearly impossible for the Husker to melt him through. So we'll see how they rectify that into the Roche 4 2 3 goes. That is Roche number 2 with a free Ag Shard. And that could be pretty nice for 4 2 3 to have with a slow and the healing coming through. Uh, lower cooldown as well means more uptime for that disarm. And that can be painful towards the Terrorblade if he doesn't have his BKB up. So, could be a nice way to give Little Gun some power. It's not the safest though. They are scouting out the Little Legions in T1. And they're in position to fight back on this Roche. Yeah, I mean, he got the shard. So it's it's a lower cooldown. It's up at 8 seconds duration of 5. You only have 3 seconds where you can actually hit if you don't have your BKB up. 
And we're going to get the Ag soon from 423. So he can just force the Terrorblade, force whoever he does a life break to just face him and fight. And that will be very, very bad news here for the side of one Sanctity. What? Not sure. That would have been a pretty big kill. He's got the Ags. Sanctity just picked it up, so he's trying to make good use of it. it. Would have been nice to get Carl. I think that balances out that last fight a lot more if he did kill off the puck. But not the biggest loss for Logan. He still had some power skill in three here, Mike. At this point, I mean, the Husker still has some good timings. But you do want to kind of bleed over towards that Ember now as they do find a kill onto Zephyr just a bit too far forward. Once this Ember works onto, say, Refresher, uh, as we tend to see now. I, I think that's where some problems will arise for T1, and then we have to start seeing some ags from them. We kind of want the ags out, maybe on Carl, but more importantly on Whitemon somehow, if our Disruptor can actually save up for his ags. That Static Storm's just going to ruin everything. Like You're going to be able to pin down the Ember, you're going to be able to pin down Fort U Tree, and just clean up the big cores who are causing issues, but it's a bit of a pipe dream for Whitemon right now. So we'll see if T1 can start to find some better angles. BKBs are starting to fade. I think the lower duration BKBs favor Lil Gun a lot more. Still, they've held on long enough. Cuckoo does have his ags up. So Primal Split charges are in play. Can be really disruptive in those fights. We've seen this be a turning point for a lot of teams once that Brewmaster does have the double split. And same issue goes for Lil Gun, Mike. Their BKBs are starting to dwindle onto that six second duration. That was most welcome. <laughs> Dyer's top oh, top is under do attack. This. Are fortified. So just like we said, Mike, as soon as uh, the Ember starts running around with the Ags, it gets really painful. BKBs are low, same thing goes for a low gun, but it doesn't matter as much. I, the Ags timing here on 423 is big as well. He forced the Terrorblade to turn around for such a long time, focusing on him. That gave a window for Lil Gun to, you know, find that opening, force the early use on Sunder, and just clean up. I think the side of T1 has to be extra cautious knowing all of this utilities up on the Husker. And Mike, Sanctity's had a perfect game. 13-0-6 on the Ember. He has not died at all. This is a very scary performance coming out from him. He had a great game one. He's having a great game two. And T1 Radiance have got to find a way to pin attack. down that Ember, but Sanctity's been very patient with how these fights have been breaking out.
What a bounty! He switches his item build as well. He's going for Shivas instead of Refresh. So understanding that he's actually not needing all his remnants to burst. Because your Husker is still doing a good chunk of damage. All he needs is to just drop them lower. To get some more control. To stop them from running away. And that Shiva's slow is going to be big. And of course, uh, armor is always good up against the Terrorblade. Taking away some of that potency of the right click damage is always good. Little gun. In a smoke now, minute 20 till the next rush. If they time this right, and it's a fast respawn, they could win big. But T1's also grouping up, Mike. Not good news. Forced to buy back early, losing Gabby. Uh, they do stop potential high ground here with the buybacks, which is where, the, where, where that worthwhileness really comes out. But you're seeing the power of Oscar towards the late game. You had some questions about this, Mike. The Ags buildup is just painful. Think about it. Life break taunt for three seconds, disarm out for five seconds, then Heaven's Halberd disarm on top. If Gabby, if his BKB fades, he can't actually hit. And, and it's just allowing this big opening for Sanctity to dance around. His team's been protecting him really well. He's got the full Shivas up now. So killing him off with a right clicks is even harder with 32 armor on top. And we haven't even hit the level 25 spikes. Find out. For 4-2-3, for pure burning damage, pure burning spears damage, true to BKBs, you are in pain if you're a terrible at that point. And I'm not sure if you 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 have enough on Gabby, I and mean, he's going to Satanic next. That this spell's going to be big, but. It is Kishka. All right, so we've got the demonic purge charges. I guess the Banal's just gonna have to farm up. He does have the gold for it. You know, he's starting to build up, so I don't think it matters for Ace 12. And now you have that utility of triple demonic purge. and make it a lot harder to run up, force these fights, all the control come through, all the damage and the breaks can be a big nuisance up against the side of T1. Dyer's and we're just, again, I, I'm just so excited to see 43 hit level 25 and see that Burning Spears pure damage going through Spell Muti, because it's not like 6 second BKBs matter too much now, but even having that utility through the BKBs is going to be big. Carl playing a bit risky, jumping around. He is highly mobile, but they have to grip. He's not careful.
Dyer's middle tower is under attack. A gift from the Tempest of Battle. Just buying some time for Gabby to keep building up. The Satanic's almost there. He does switch over for Crystalis for a little bit more damage, so Radiant's um, top not tower fully attack. kitted out yet. Dyer's does not have buyback gold on TV, attack. so you gotta be cautious when he does show up. They will be trading tier twos, it looks like, Dyer's as Hogan will make their way down spot. top. And T1 will take a spot, maybe try to apply some pressure onto some high ground towers. That's where the Terror Blade does shine with the illusions at this point in the game. They do a lot of damage and a lot of work on objectives. So that's going to force at least Sanctity back. Ember can kind of deal with this quite well. He did, does get glimpsed home, but he already cleared up Creep Wave. Uh, doesn't mind too much, but the illusion spams there. Tier 3 might actually fall there, Mike. Uh, Logan's going to have to do some quick work on that top tower. Dyer's bottom is under attack. Uh, not everyone. <laughs> Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Yep. Oh. Got the level 25 as well, Mike. Burning Spears, pure damage. That's going to rip right through Gabby if he's not careful. And the siege will begin. Sanct can just kind of remnant in as well. So, four five man's ready to go. Still a lot of time left in that Aegis. A minute left. And we should make him good work happen in the high ground. You for low gun. Radiant's middle tower has fallen. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Middle barracks are under attack. Radiant's middle barracks has fallen. Not much time left and tick away now at the right second. Forty Tree still pretty strong though. I, I don't think he minds that Aegis loss at all. Knowing that there's no Cuckoo, knowing that there's no split to Radiant's Cyclone him up, there's a lot attack. of room here for Forty Tree to just play. He does get threatened by the Glimpse back just a tiny amount, but not gonna overcommit. They need a Shadow Demon around with Demonic Purge. They already got points to the racks. They're very happy here on the side of Logan. T1, not out of it yet. Two racks up, still very healthy on the side lanes. They've still got a lot of presence coming through with Zephyr. Uh, a lot of room to grow with Dyer's Gabby, Silver Red Chop, Satanic top. Up, um, maybe ditches the boots now, he could go for, here. say, a uh, Swift Point, but uh, you're, you are kind of running out of space with TV. And uh, up for Lil Gun, the room every well, it's just time to see Dyer's top what top more Sanctity goes top. for. He is going for the refresh next, Mike, our Ember is going to be really big. Uh, Dyer's top tower has fallen. <laughs> Try for a swift blink. Um, there is some 
room for a refresh as well. If he feels the need for a second metamorphosis, I don't think that's going to matter. I think he'd want that refresh with a buyback. And that's a ways off from him having all of that gold. For T1, the next big item impact I see is actually still White Mon's Ags. And he is saving up for it. It's still a long ways off. They will go for the smoke play. If they catch someone out here, that could be big. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Never refuse gold given. Looking for a response out from Logan, looking for them to maybe break their position right now and give an opening out to T1. T1 will go for a smoke play that was under a ward. Completely spotted out. Probably not going to be able to get too much off the back of that movement now. They will try Roshan, 2 minutes 20. Lots of time left for either side. We'll see if they find an angle. Sanctity's going pretty far forward by himself here. Dyer's top tower is under attack. <laughs> Middle barracks are under attack. Yeah, that would be the big one. If they can pin down the Husker Radiance somehow, that will give spot. them a massive opening onto the high ground. Roche is still a minute away, so Wilgun doesn't really get too much on the map from those kills. That's going to hold them back a bit. That will give some time for our Mars to respawn, our Bane to respawn as well. But not making progression while the Terrible is dead is a big detriment. They'd they, they want to go high ground right now. They'd want to take another set of racks, solidify their position here. Gabby's going to be able to make it, make his way in for that next Roche fight, it feels like. And that's where things get really scared for Loka. If they lose their Mars, if they lose their Bane again, they're going to lack a lot of control. They're getting really big, not just on Gabby, but even Carl has managed to overtake now in network. Overwhelming blink up. Going to be synthesizing the Ags as well to get the travels to really work the map. And with the Ags up, that Dream Coil through BKB is push, putting Lil Gun back a huge amount. Remember, White Mon also has his Ags slowly being formed up as well. For Lil Gun, they will have that spike with her Bane soon. Um, 200 gold away from the full Ags, no buyback anyway. Might go for it. No! Oh god. Oh well. Bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Yeah. Yeah, they, they have to. They've got the presence to do so. They've got the Ag's Dream Coil. Not much to hold them back. Uh, Logan already lost that bot here, Tree, so someone's got to keep checking that bot lane. 
prevent a bit of a split push. Now, they have a pretty big item up here, Mike. The Ag's up in the Bane and the Hex up in Kishka. They've got a lot of control. Just need to find the angle to use it. have a lot of utility coming out from the Spirit Breaker. Dream Quote's gonna be up, but this is a very hard defense. I don't see you killing off the Husker. I don't see you stopping them from just focusing on the objectives. And we're gonna go for that neck plate. Just gonna look to cut that vein off, Mike. Carl gonna have to put in a lot of work, but it's looking tough. Radiant's main tower is under attack. Radiant's structures are fortified. Dyer's Radiant's middle tower has fallen. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower has fallen. Radiant's ancient is under attack. Oh my god. Where are the creeps? Radiance Ancient is under attack. Radiance Ancient is under attack. Oh my god. 